Welcome to SC24 here in Atlanta, the supercomputing conference. I'm Dave Nicholson with 6.5 on the road, and I have a very special guest this morning, Armando from Dell. We're here to talk about the destiny of density. Welcome. Thank you. I am here in Dell's secret lab <laughs> with Dell scientist Armando. What do you do at Dell, Armando? I'm an AI product planner, so kind of like a scientist, but there's smarter people behind me. So. Fantastic. There's always smarter people than us in the room. No, no. So we're going to talk about uh, sort of the, uh, what I'd like to call the destiny for density. Yes. How's that? Uh, I like it. Where, where are we in terms of just how dense compute is and how that relates to AI? What's sort of the state of the art? Let's start. Yeah, there. I mean, let's let's talk first about you know what we did a couple of years ago with the XC ninety six eighty. So that was our first eight way GPU platform. Uh, we put that in a six U form factor. Now, now you say a couple of years ago. How long? How long ago? Was Calendar that? year twenty two. Uh, twenty two. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it has been. All right. Yeah. And then if you look fast forward to what we just announced here at the show in a Dell Technology World, is we now introduced a new form factor. It's a four U direct liquid cool system, but now you can still put eight GPUs. So now we're bringing the footprint by 2U. And so by doing direct liquid okay. cooling, we're able to essentially cool the GPUs, cool the CPUs. And by doing that, we're actually able to save our customers 2U of rack space. Now, so, why is that important? Hold on, hold on. Okay. What, what, is the, uh, which, what is the chassis? If, if it was the XC9680 before, yeah. Is it still the 9680? But yeah, yeah we, we, we're creative here. So now okay. it's the XC9685L and the XC9680L. But for L stands you, for the liquid. For you, liquid cooled a GPU because the original 9680, if you will, was air, is air cooled. Correct. Because not everybody is going to do direct, li direct liquid today. Correct. Yeah, I, okay, I mean, okay. and just so you understand, is we know all the hypes around direct liquid cooling, right? We know right. everybody wants the density, but you know, Dell is gonna still trade, stay true to our enterprise and commercial customers. We're still gonna support 19 inch rack air cooled systems. But if you look at where we're going in the future and essentially trying to push the boundaries of density, we will start to look at 21 inch rack architectures as well. So it's, you know, what we're, customers are telling us is, hey, before, you know, I wanted, you know, 40 GPUs per rack. Now, essentially, I want 72 GPU rack. Now, I want 96 GPUs per rack. And now we have customers that are asking for even greater density than 96 GPUs per rack. So kind of put your brain around yeah. and you're like, okay, 96 GPUs per rack. Yeah, you got to bring over 100 kilowatts per rack in order to make that happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's an insane amount of power. So you were, you were going to... You were going to tell us about why this is important, this additional yeah. level of density. Um, so this is really important because if you look at GPUs, um, they're not getting smaller and they're not consuming less power. <laughs> it's just, you know, the, the game we're in today, right? And so if you look at, you know, what we're looking at for future roadmaps, can't talk about our partner's future roadmaps because we're not allowed to do that. But if you look at that, you know, the power is not going to get less. It's going to get more, right? But here's the deal is when you want to go run these AI workloads and you want to go do these large language models that have 20 billion, 40 billion, 80 billion parameters, guess what? You need a lot of GPUs to go and train that model. And if you look at, you know, where we're going here, you know, we know you got to train the model and that's a necessary evil. But guess what? You don't get any value until that model is in production. So this is why they want to train the model faster to get to insight faster, and then essentially to get to some you know new uh, you know data that they need to know, maybe some new decision, and essentially you know that's what brings uh, value to your, you know our customers. So do you continue to support in that smaller form factor a variety of uh, GPU brands, if yeah, you will? Great question. Uh, so we're all about addressing silicon diversity. And so what I mean by silicon diversity, we're not only talking about silicon diversity on the CPU side, we're also talking about silicon diversity on the accelerator side and GPU side, right? And so when you look at you know, what we're always trying to do, you know, for example, the XC9680 that we just talked about, the 6U air-cooled, we support NVIDIA GPUs, we su uh, support AMD GPUs, and, uh, and we'll actually start supporting Intel GPUs as well. Fast forward to what we're doing with the direct liquid cool systems, same thing, we'll support you know, NVIDIA GPUs, AMD GPUs, and then not only that, you have your choice of either I want it with an Intel CPU or I want it with an AMD CPU, right? And so what's going on here is with the silicon diversity, we're giving our customers flexibility and choice so that they say, because hey, you know this, not one size fits all, and there is yeah. no serial bullet to say, hey, I get to buy one system, and I get to run one system, and it'll solve all AI workloads. We know that's not the case, right? Well, you just you just uh, reminded me that uh, actually even asking about diversity in GPUs is almost a knuckleheaded question 
in the context of Dell because they are accelerators mm -hmm. because you actually offer more than just GPUs. Yes. So, <laughs> so, so, uh, so, but when you, when you talk about that level of diversity and that level of choice and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, Dell's often looked at as kind of the Switzerland of AI and, mm -hmm. you know, let's tell, let's have the customers tell us what they need, fit for function. You believe there's room for a variety of suppliers in all of these areas. Sure. Um, there's always a benefit to standardization in a certain way. Oh yes. Right? <laughs> so what about on the direct liquid cooling side? Um, who makes the cooling if it's if it's a if it's a series of partners, okay fine, we don't have to talk about each right. of them. Um, but on the direct liquid cooling side, does that vary from product to product? What does that look like? Or is that a Dell yeah. bespoke thing? Yeah, no, let's talk about direct liquid cooling cuz you're right, it's the wild wild west right now, all right? And so you'll go talk to different partners, they design their cold plates differently, they design right. their electronics differently. The direct liquid cool manifolds are different. The quick disconnects are different. And really what we're trying to drive now is standards into direct liquid cooling. Uh, so we announced essentially our integrated rack solutions where we actually fully integrate, you know, not only rack stack and cable, but we include CDUs, we include the manifolds. And essentially what we do is we test and burn that in in our factory and we roll that into your four walls. And so okay. it's ready to go and it's not a size experiment. It's going to work, right? Okay. Now, the other big thing that we're doing is we're actually working with all our partners now and we are trying to drive essentially uh, uh, OCP standards into direct liquid cooling now. Uh, so there's a okay. gentleman uh, named Tim Shedd, a really bright gentleman on our CTO team. He's worked hand in hand with each of our partners to say, hey, Here's what essentially the spec we want to work to, and here are the standards we want to work to. And oh, by the way, if you do these standards, we're easily more we're more easily able to integrate your CDUs, your manifolds, your quick disconnects into our architecture. So, you know, it's a symbiotic relationship. You know, you know, win-win for both of us, right? Because they want to sell their gear, we want to sell full integrated rack solutions. And so, what we're really doing right now is the partnership and making sure that we drive standards, but not only that, we drive up quality as well. Yeah, yeah. Wild Wild West is a great way to describe it. Over the last three years, just at SC24 at this conference, watching the development of liquid cooling technology, we, we're all excited by what the latest GPU is, the latest LLM model. But seriously, in the last three years, it looks like we've gone from people trying to sell pool pumps <laughs> to actual technology that looks like it was designed first for data center use. Yes. Um, and the, there's still a staggering array of standards and, and, and ways to do this. Mm -hmm. If I were, if you were advising me on building a data center that I wanted to be future proof, mm -hmm. if I said, Armando, I want my data center to be future proof. Mm -hmm. um, once you stopped laughing, because the question is so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, how much, how much power per rack do I need to have in terms of a drop? to at least get me through the next two or three years. Well, let me tell you a story, right? Uh, right? So when we look at, you know, what we have out on our show floor, we were the first ones to actually ship GB200 in a 21 inch rack, right? Okay, okay. Uh, but when you look at essentially that 21 inch rack architecture, right? Uh, this is where we essentially are driving the standards. We are driving, working with OCP. The first OCP version, we looked at this, was a version two. And that version two essentially, you know, it could handle up to 200 kilowatts per rack. We started to look at the roadmaps. Nobody, and we has, started look, nobody <laughs> has two. Nobody has 200 uh, kilowatts. There, 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 there's some people are there. there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. No, but I mean seriously. But, as, but just you know, if you if you throw a rock and hit a data center, it's gonna, it, you know, they're gonna go. Well, we still have 10. Oh you yeah, know, no. 20, 30. Yeah. So you know that that's you know that's a paradigm, right? Yeah. You know, this is where you've got to say when I future proof. Okay. And so going back to my story here is when we saw that 200 kilowatt, and then we saw all the roadmaps. We actually said, hey, let's go to OVR rack three version three. And version three will actually lo allow you to go to 480 kilowatts in that rack. Now, okay. why did we choose 480 kilowatts, right? It's because just what you talked about. In the next two to three years, you are going to see, you know, CPU, uh, you, know, uh, you know, TDPs rise. Uh, NVIDIA, when they're coupling an ARM, you know, CPU with an accelerator, those boards are getting bigger, more power there. Mm -hmm. And so the reason that we went to that 480, because is we want to help future proof for our customers, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you tell me, hey, you know, you know, today I'm bringing 15 to 20 kilowatts per rack, I'm going to tell you you probably need to double in the next year. Okay. Now, if you're one of these big tier two CSPs, you know, they're actually already running 100 kilowatts per rack. 
Uh, we have some big, you know, Department of Energy customers that are doing 200 kilowatts per rack. So we're, we're there, man, uh, yeah. and it, it is happening. And so that's why we went to 480 because the other beautiful thing about this rack infrastructure is, hey, you can start with a turn sled today, but when there's the next generation of AMD processor, guess what? You just swap out the sled and the infrastructure stays the same and you just replace the computer. And oh, by the way, we've already put the headroom for you to do that and it'll live for three generations because that's the other big thing data centers have told us, hey, I'm going to go build this data center. You're telling me it's the right thing. But once I implement this rack infrastructure, want to implement this direct liquid cooling, once I essentially have my water flowing from overhead or bottom, I don't want to change it again, right? Because right, right. this is hard. And so Dell make this easy for me. And so that's what we're trying to do and, you know, put an easy button on, you know, trying to build that rack of infrastructure and let it live for two to three generations. So if you step far enough back from this kind of modern data center architecture, what you see is electricity coming in, hmm. heat being generated, heat being dissipated. Yep. And then at the other end, there's an opportunity at some point to recover energy, leverage that energy somewhere else. Um, I know you can neither confirm nor deny the existence of a uh, nuclear energy division of Dell. <laughs> so we won't talk about the, where the power is going to come from. I, I imagine a lot of folks standing in the parking lots of data centers holding an electric cord, kind of looking around, <laughs> puzzled, like, oh, great, we got 480 kilowatt rack capability, but no power. But are you seeing yet this, this, uh, the, the questions about, hey, uh, what can we do with this heat that's coming out of the liquid cooling environment? Or is that, do you think, is that a little, little, little further down the road? I think it's a little further down the road, but I think you are going to see that heat dissipation and how do we turn that heat dissipation into some form of energy, right? Hey, maybe you put it in your coal loop, maybe you use it to heat other parts of your organization, maybe you turn it into heat so that you can heat your buildings. There's different things and different ideas that are going around that. Uh, you know, we, you know, we're working on some ideas. Uh, but the other big thing that you think about is with direct liquid cooling, you know, if you just cool the chip and the GPU, mm -hmm. you're solving about 85% of the power problem, right? Yeah. What we're doing is we're using a hybrid approach and essentially we're going to use, you know, fans, we're going to use efficient fan algorithms to push that other 15% out. Okay. Now, the reason that we do that hybrid is because, hey, if you go direct liquid cooling on your memory, you do it on your voltage regulators, you do it on your CPU, GPU, that's a lot of copper that goes to the system drives up cost, you know, essentially right. drives up more resources, you know, and, it, and, you know, and it really your serviceability goes out the window. And so what we're trying to do is do the smart things and right. combine it with air. And hey, if you do direct liquid cooling with a simply CPU and GPU and use air for other, you're not going to essentially have to put more components and more heat dissipation. So it's a it's much more efficient way to do so that. You th so you see a, a, a hybrid approach. You, we're going to take, yeah, take, take the hybrid approach. Others have not, uh, yeah. but we do believe the hybrid, uh, hybrid approach is the way because guess what? You know, the more copper you put in there, more cooling plates you get in there, the more power you're consuming. It just, it, to me, it, it makes sense intuitively because um, although, you know, the, en the engineer in your head says, oh, wouldn't it be cool? We'll, we'll, we'll have everything completely surrounded in copper. In fact, at, at one end of the spectrum, it's let's dip these things in vats of oil, right? <laughs> because they would argue complete, perfect coverage, you know, absolutely everything. Um, but there's always a trade-off. And so it, it just seems cla like classic Dell to look at it and go, okay, what if we could, we, let's look at the 80-20 rule. Let's see what the most efficient combination is. Right. And so in some cases, people will still be only using air cooling yep. um, because they're not, they're not trying to get the maximum density possible. But today, maximum density possible equals direct, direct liquid cooling. Yeah, no, 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 no ifs, ands, or buts. buts. Yes, sir, you got you're, it. You're doing it. Um, the folks who have been dragging Cat5 cable, do we just all of a sudden put hoses in their hands <laughs> and assume that they're home gardeners and uh, they can do this stuff? I mean, do you have certification programs for folks yeah, on the cooling no, part? Great, what, is that, great what does question. that look like? Yeah, so, um, you know, we, we've announced these L11 rack integration services, right? We talked about it at OCP. We're talking about it at SE24, right? With these essentially rack integration service, we actually have a site assessment that we go and do with our customers, right? 
Um, just so you know, uh, we've deployed, you know, some large deployments over the last year, and we took those learnings and developed it into a service so that we can essentially have the best outcome for our customers, okay? When you look at the site assessment, you know, we go from, hey, we go to the site. <laughs> we look at essentially how many AC bus bars do you want to bring per rack? How much power per rack can you bring? Okay, what is essentially your, your liquid cooling like? What are your flow rates? Essentially, what size CDU do we need to put into this, right? Okay, how do you want to design your hot and cold aisles you know we go through the whole assessment before we actually go and implement it because here's the deal if you do not do that <laughs> you're gonna have some big gotchas when you get on site right oh hey i put the cdu at the bottom of the rack oh they're actually bringing in water from the top of the rack oh that doesn't work now i've got to go on site and i've got to move my cdus got to move all my compute trays got to remove all my power shelves it's not a pretty thing and you don't want to see your customers see, you know, do that sausage making. And so if you do that initial site assessment up front, you solve all those got you's. Essentially, we plan it out. Uh, we essentially do a schedule, you know, T minus. And then, hey, when you're ready to go and this is your production date, we're going to make sure we hit that for you. Do you see issues with true IT, you know, data center veterans sort of having the belief that they can kind of do, rack and stack it on their own and then coming to grips with the, right. the, you know, the, the added complexity because everyone tells me, it's like, no, no, it's way more complex than, oh, yeah. <laughs> than it used to be. So, so it really is kind of emerging frontier. So if you had to predict, now I'm not talking about you know, product releases or anything, mm. or, or anything else. Um, if we were to sit here five years from now, I know it's an, an infinite amount of time in terms of, in terms of IT, yeah. but, but wh where, do you, where do you think we go? Are we, are we, headed, are we headed just, you know, yeah. Doubling, tripling, quadrupling density in the same direction, or, or, or in your mind, are you imagining some something different? Uh, we are imagining something different. Um, in five years, I probably won't have as much hair as I have right now, so we don't want to think about five years from now. Uh, but no, what we're imagining is, you know, we are looking at different ways to deliver power to these systems, right? So. If you look at the architecture that we've just announced with the M77-25 and the you know 21 ratchet infrastructure, we've actually taken the power supplies out of the chassis and we use external power shells. Now here's the reason why. If you have four power supplies in a chassis and you're trying to run eight GPUs and one of those power supplies goes down, guess what happens? You gotta throttle and you lose performance. And that's the number one thing customers hate when they're running large AI jobs and also when they're running large HPC and simulation jobs. When that jobs. GPU was tens of thousands of dollars just for the- yeah, right, Exactly. Right, right. And so what we've done is said, okay, well, hey, let's actually build external power shells. And with those external power shells, I actually put six power supplies. You could still lose two power supplies in that power shelf and I still give you full performance. Not only that, if you want more redundancy, I can pour more power shelves and you can use the whole power shelf and I'm still gonna give you full performance. Go look at other architectures out there. They're not doing the external power shelf. And not only that, that external power shelf allows you to bring 480 directly into the rack so that you don't have to step it down to 240 and you don't strand any power. You just say 480 like it's just this casual thing. 480. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. 480 kilowatts. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's like a village's worth of, <laughs> of electricity. So what I'm hearing, Armando, is five years from now, uh, uh, all of the stuff that goes on at data center will fit in my pocket, and it won't get my, it won't, it won't make me warm. <laughs> that's awesome. No, it is great to, it is great to hear that uh, that Dell is thinking ahead of it and not just responding yeah. to the madness. Yeah, and the I mean, the other big thing is sustainability. You'll hear that big with us, and you know, we're yep. looking at you know how we make AI sustainable. Uh, you know, when you look at, you know, these big new systems, you know, they do do the work of essentially two or three racks of old gear, right? Yeah. And so if you think, hey, I can buy two or three of these eight GPU systems and they do work of 10, you know, 10 to 20 GPU systems of two to three generations, well, guess what? You are saving power because, hey, hey, instead of having two or three racks, now I only have one rack. Now that one rack might draw more power, but if you have essentially each rack draw, drawing 50 kilowatts and now you only have one rack drawing 100 kilowatts, well, guess what? You did save some power and that is sustainable. Fantastic. Armando, thanks so much for, for being with us here. At 6.5 on the road, I'm Dave Nicholson, and everyone should remember that when Dell tells you you're dense, it's a compliment. <laughs> thanks for joining us from SC24. Again, Armando from Dell, thanks so much. Thank you. Stay tuned. Oh, <laughs>